Metabolic acidosis is an abnormal process or condition leading to an increase in the fixed acid in the blood uh, and the consequence is a fall in the plasma bicarbonate. So any alteration or a downward alteration in the plasma bicarbonate associated with a fall in the pH or an increase in the fixed acids in the blood produces this condition called acidemia. So a condition which causes acidemia is known to produce acidosis. This is probably one of the most common problems when you in intensive care practice, whether it is in the emergency room, whether it is in the operating room, whether it is in the field during trauma resuscitation or in the intensive care unit when you are resuscitating patients with any kind of shock. The principal causes of metabolic acidosis are the addition of an acid, which could be endogenous like keto acids as happens in diabetic ketoacidosis, or it could be exogenous where you give a lot of chloride containing fluids like saline. On the other hand, rather than addition of acid, if the base that is present in the body is removed either through the bowel or through the kidney, like a gastrointestinal disturbance or a renal tubular acidosis, you could also be getting a metabolic acidosis. So as has been described here, those which are caused by an uh, addition of an acid usually produce a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And those where they, which are caused by an alteration in the bowel or uh, retention of bicarb or at the renal tubular level produce what is called as a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So the high anion gap metabolic acidosis is caused by several common conditions which you can remember by the common mnemonic mud piles where methanol or methanol intoxication, uremia, that is chronic kidney disease, diabetic ketoacidosis, paracetamol and propylene glycol ingestion, infections, iron, isoniazid or INH, and inborn errors of metabolism, especially in pediatric patients, can produce high anion gap metabolic acidosis. In addition, the generation of lactic acidosis as a consequence of anaerobic metabolism in the conditions of shock can also produce a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. In addition, the presence of ethylene glycol and salicylates in the blood can also produce high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Normal anion gap acidosis, metabolic acidosis, on the other hand, is produced by hyperchloremia, that is exogenous administration of chlorides, as, as we have described before. Acetazolamide, indu uh, acetazolamide administration, renal tubular acidosis, which cause, caused by damage to the renal tubules by drugs or infection. Diarrhea, ileostomies, and enterocutaneous and enterouretric fistulae, ureteroenterostomies, and pancreatoenterostomies. So, these are the several conditions which can cause the different types of acid metabolic acidosis. So, when you talk about metabolic acidosis, we have mentioned that there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis and a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So what exactly is this anion gap? Anion gap is the difference between the anions and the cations in the blood and that is the difference between the sodium minus the sum of chloride and bicarbonate. The anion gap, the anion gap is a derived variable primarily used for the evaluation of metabolic acidosis to determine the presence of unmeasured anions. So when you have a metabolic acidosis, you could get a high anion gap if there is a big gap. The normal anion gap depends upon the serum phosphate and the serum albumin concentrations. And the elevated anion gap usually suggests the presence of a metabolic acidosis. So if you have, if you have only the electrolytes to look at, if you look at the difference between the sodium and the sum of chloride and bicarbonate, and you find a number that is more than 12, that means a high anion gap, you can safely assume that this patient has a high anion gap metabolic acidosis even without the ABG in your hand. So when you talk about the unmeasured anions, the role of albumin and phosphate on the ABG becomes very important. 
So because the normal anion gap, as I said before, depends on the serum phosphate and the serum albumin. So the normal anion gap is 0.2 times the albumin concentration in grams per liter plus 1.5 times the concentration of phosphate in millimoles per liter. Albumin is the major unmeasured anion and contributes almost to the whole of the value of the anion gap. So when a patient has a low albumin, which is a very frequent occurrence in the intensive care unit, every, you have to correct the measured anion gap to the corrected anion gap as per the serum albumin concentration. Every one gram per liter decrease in albumin will decrease the anion gap by 0.25 millimoles. millimoles. So if you have somebody whose anion gap is two point, whose anion gap is eleven, but has a uh, albumin of two point five, so which should actually be four. So you add 0.25 plus another 0.25 for the drop in albumin, then add it to the anion gap. So you get an anion gap of twelve, which is abnormal. So a a normally high anion gap acidosis. The importance of this calculation lies in the fact that a normally high anion gap acidosis in a hypoalbuminemic patient may actually appear as a normal anion gap. So if a patient's albumin is less than 3 grams per deciliter, you should actually look at the corrected albumin before labeling an anion gap as being normal. What are the effects of metabolic acidosis? Is it just an innocuous uh, occurrence or it has does it have some systemic uh, manifestations? It has several systemic manifestations. The most important and the immediate response of the body to metabolic acidosis is by respiratory uh, stimulation. So a, an acidotic patient will have hyperventilation, what is classically described as Kussmaul respiration, which is a compensatory response. And the oxygen dissociation curve shifts to the right in a patient who has an acidemic pH. The detrimental effects of metabolic acidosis are seen in the cardiovascular system where there is a depression of the myocardial contractility and sympathetic overactivity. Which means that a patient's blood pressure might actually drop because of a low ejection fraction if the acidosis is not corrected. And when you start these patients on catecholamines like norepinephrine or epinephrine to correct the hypotension, the, res the reactivity to the, or the of these receptors to these uh, catecholamines is also blunted because acidosis produces a resistance to the effect of catecholamines. In addition, the peripheral arteriolar vasodilatation also causes a fall in the blood pressure and the venous return is compromised by a venoconstriction of the peripheral veins resulting in a relative hypovolemia. The Acidosis triggers the outward flux of potassium from the muscles, from the cells to the extracellular compartment, which results in hyperkalemia, which can affect, which can have a detrimental effect on the cardiovascular system. 